Hi, I'm Kevin Adams. I'm a 2014 inductee into the IPA Hall of Fame, and I'm here with Lenny Gamalka, who is a 1988 inductee of the IPA Hall of Fame. And uh, this video chat is sponsored by the IPA, and it's to be used as uh, part of their virtual poker festival, the virtual convention. And so you'll be watching it in, in that format, hopefully. Now, Lenny, I haven't seen you in a, in a long time. The beard, uh, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I haven't seen you since January. What, what have you been up to? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Pretty That's much good. nothing. That sounds like my schedule. I'm telling you. I, I, I will tell you one thing. I, uh, I have gotten a lot done around the house, uh, both on my property and uh, inside here. And I've done more things than Bosch has seen me do in, in probably uh, the last four or five years. Or longer, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe that. Yeah, ditto, ditto. Same thing here. We've been taking down trees. We've been uh, just doing all kinds of things. And, and, and the work is still in progress, but it's all good. And uh, I miss seeing the people. I miss seeing the guys in a band, of course. Uh, last time I seen you, Kevin, um, January. And that was actually the weekend we played for the IPA at Polonia Banquets. And that was the weekend that we, right to the day, celebrated our 40th anniversary with Chicago Push. Uh, the band Yeah, that's right. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> the band started 40 years ago, January of that weekend. I think it was the 25th, perhaps. And we played uh, our opening day with the Chicago Push was at the Omen. Teddy and Jenny O had the Omen on Archer Avenue in Brighton Park there, just uh, west of uh, California. And mm -hmm. uh, we played there, man, and we had a great time. And here we are 40 years later playing at Polonia, which is probably, I don't want to say even a mile, probably half a mile uh, west, southwest of uh, the old Omen. Um, still owned by the Mahai family, and uh, we had a nice crowd for the IPA that Sunday or that Saturday, actually. And it was right. in January. January, last time we saw each other. January. I'm, this is as close as I've been to you in, uh, my God, since January, right? Yeah. So, so you know, it's funny thinking about that 40th anniversary, 40 years as a band leader. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there are still some bootleg copies of that first job out there. And people are still listening to it 40 years later. Yeah, they really so that's are. A, that's a, that is a true testament to you, Len. Yeah, I, well, thanks, Kevin. Thanks. And the, hey, you know, what, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go right back to the beginning. There's, there's, a, there's a, a, a question that I've wondered about and other musicians have asked me about it. I'm, I, I'm never quite sure about this. Uh, what was your first instrument? Was it trumpet or was it clarinet? It was actually drums. It was actually drums as a young guy, very young. I was probably four or five years old. But um, drums was, you know, in my heart, probably like most kids of that age. And then um, what happened is um, I, uh, my, we had in, in Chicago, we had uh, Ron Terry's Polka Party on w, WGN TV Channel 9 back then. And my ma saw... Um, the Ron Terry show come on with a polka band. The band was Marion Lush and the Musical Stars. And my mom hmm. said to my dad, my mom says to my dad, she says, look, it's Stash Mikrut is on TV, you know, because Stanley Mikrut and my dad sure. grew, grew up. They were older boys together and so on. They, bass player. They, they grew up in the old neighborhood. Yeah, bass player, Stash Mikrut, yeah. Played on with Steve Adamczyk with the first of tones with Marion with many bands. So, um, so my mom was taken in by seeing Stash Mikudun on TV, and it was Mary and Lush musical stars just came onto the circuit, and Stash played with them then. And uh, my mom said, "Len, come and look at this band." And I was, it's, it sounded really great, man, really good. I remember Junior Vojnak was playing trumpet with Marion at the time, and we listened, and it sounded really good. And my mom, after the show was over, my mom said, um, "Len, would you like to take trumpet lessons? Wouldn't you like to, you know, play like that?" And I says, "Yeah." Of course, you know, of course I would like to play like that. Sure. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> we signed up in, in my grade school. Uh, Stanley Micas was the music teacher's name. And uh, we signed up. I had a music lesson once a week. It was every Thursday for about 15 to 20 minutes tops. And it was trumpet. I uh, started in about fifth grade. Oh. Fifth grade. And then, uh, and then a year or two later, I wanted to take clarinet lessons. And I asked him and he denied me. He said, no, it's... They don't go together. You, know, you play one or the other. So, 
Um, <laughs> I didn't take lessons. If we could only see you now. <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know, you know. But I, I didn't take lessons, but I had a clarinet, and I just, you know, tampered with it behind the scenes. And um, and I never, I really didn't play clarinet live on a gig until, uh, until I started playing with Marion. Maybe I was 15 years old or so. And uh, wow. I was afraid to at that time. But How about you, Kevin? No. Uh, you're a trumpet guy through and through, right? Actually, it may surprise. It, probably, it, it may not surprise you. It will probably surprise a lot of poker people out there to know that my first instrument was a uh, yeah, drink up, Len. Was a, uh, a was guitar. And my background, my dad played guitar, and and uh, we heard poker music around the house, and and I heard country music around the house. Uh, my parents were were. Uh, 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 pretty eclectic with the uh, types of music, whatever kind of records I wanted, they uh, they got them. Whether it was Doc Severinsen or um, Red Foley, Kitty Wells, uh, I go back to like old old country, you know. Yeah, um, it was North, Northern Minnesota, right? Yeah, Northern Minnesota. And uh, so the fir my first instrument was guitar, and that's that's where I first got my writing experience. Also, uh, a guitar is a good. Uh, instrument to learn, like concertina and accordion, where you learn the chords, you learn the structure of of, of yeah. uh, how music is put together. So that that kind of was my concertina was the guitar, and then I started uh, my first instrument in school, the school concept, like you described with a um, uh, with a teacher was trumpet, cornet. Actually, I started on cornet for the first yeah. year in Minnesota. They started us on cornet, maybe yeah. you as well, but. But then uh, I got my first trumpet, and uh, soon after that, the polka bug hit me, and uh, it was all polka for a while. And then, of course, I studied piano and guitar and picked up clarinet later on and, and uh, just about everything I could get my hands on, I guess. But trumpet well, for the most well, part. Um, but the, well, you know, I, I was surprised with me. Um, we, we needed to put – we had some Christmas songs done, and we needed to get them out and released. And uh, you helped me out with keyboard. You did on a few tunes with us on the uh, right, right. Gift of Music CD with the Chicago Push for Christmas. I I, I think it was like 2006, right? So, around 2006, there. Uh, 2006, right around there. But yeah. don't forget, don't don't forget, Len. Before then, I recorded on guitar on your uh, My Forever Friend. My Forever Friend. That's right. Yeah. And that's me on piano also on that. I played piano and, and guitar. Yeah, that's right. My favorite friend, that's right. And you know, it's a funny thing that you mentioned that because, you know, um, some people may not be aware of it, that, you know, the time marches on and you hear the songs and you kind of assume, well, you take it for granted. You don't know who's playing what, you know, but yourself, as you said, on My Forever Friend, dating right. way back to, to the late 90s there, you started with me in 97, I think, right? 97, that's end it. of 97. That's and right. uh, uh, my forever friend, you did that. Um, um, and, and then, you know, prior to your, you know, switch hitting like that, uh, back in the 80s, uh, we did a song, uh, Away in a Manger, on the WRS Christmas album. And uh, great piano work. Who was that? Mike Yvon. Mike Yvon. Yes, I know Mike that. And, and, and guitar as well, right? He played guitar on that cut, I believe. Uh, no, Steve Maui. Oh, oh, Steve Maui did. Steve Maui did. Uh, late Steve Maui. Now he's gone. But, yeah. Uh, Steve Maui played guitar. Mike Yvon played piano. And that was done. Let me tell you what. That was done like, what do you guys want to do? Let's do this. Mike says, I can play a little bit of chords on it. And I mean, we just did it like right then and there. So, the, you know, the thing you hear is was done right there, all sporadically right on the spot, you know. He might yeah, you know, he, he like you. He's a he's really great on the fly like that. Cool, really cool. Uh, uh, Mike Mike plays guitar as well. I I know that does, that's what yeah. made me think of guitar. But he plays guitar and he's he's a really talented guy for sure. Yeah, like you are, like you are, Kevin. Uh, oh, thank that's, you, that's, thank that's, you. That's Thanks, awesome Len. to have um, you know those type of those types of capabilities when you're in the studio because you know you're looking at each other and you you know it's not like we're a big band and we'll have these orchestrations and okay one two and you know it's not that way you've got wow. to create it right from square one and pretty interesting yeah, you know that's 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 something else that i would like to talk about and i think i think listeners will really find this interesting is how uh recordings are done how a song is is put together i have um one and another common thread that we have in our history len is that we both played with eddie lozancic 
and both recorded with him. You, of course, more extensively than I did. I did six full studio albums with him and then was on, you know, several cuts after that. But I have great, great memories of being in the studio with um, uh, with Eddie. And I was going to ask you about uh, one or two memorable, whether they be funny or serious or uh, uh, whatever, experiences in the studio. And then I, I, I have a couple. Sincerely, one that involves Eddie and one involves you. Oh, man. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, I, I remember one part. Well, you know, with Eddie, we used to record at Sound Recording Studios down on Michigan Avenue in Chicago's Loop uh, back in the uh, '60s, '70s, and uh, and then Eddie had his studio going. However, when we did the Polka Concert album, um, we recorded that at Sound Studios uh, with My Sweet Mary Lou and so on. And um, I remember that st that session started. I want to say like, you know, seven o'clock, like most people after work, we go in the studio on a weekday and we met there and we recorded and we walked out of that studio probably seven o'clock in the morning. I mean, you know, the guys finished wow. their parts and then I overdubbed a bunch of parts. And uh, I mean, man, you know, just crazy. I mean, those are great memories, stuff like that. Great, great, great memories. We we're walking out of the studio, downtown Chicago, mind you, this sound studio, I think was, um, uh, I'm, I'm almost positive that it was 230 North Michigan Avenue, uh, just uh, just uh, south of Wacker Drive. Nice part of Michigan right there, Michigan Avenue in Chicago. And um, we're walking out of the studio and we're tired and, you know, sun is shining and people are all, you know, full of vim and vigor and they're coming into work, you know, and we're, I just want to go home and go to sleep, you know, it's crazy. It just does it, my Sweet Mary Lou session. And, uh, and oh, many wow, other yeah. sessions with Eddie. I remember a session with Marion Lush. With, with Marion, we recorded at, um, well, a couple different studios, but I recorded my first album with Marion. It was the uh, LP called uh, An Evening with Marion Lush. And we recorded that at RCA. Cool cover. Uh, cool cover with Marion with the cool cover. cigarette, right? Love it, love it. Right. So it was at the RCA Recording Studios. Uh, and that was at 445 North Lakeshore Drive. That's where Navy Pier is at now. You know, that's where RCA was at. And uh, I'm I was kidding. Like, I was like big time. I was like 15 years old going in there and thinking, man, this is cool. And, you know, right downtown. And and on that session with Marion, we recorded clarinet polka with Marion, um, which was never released. Marion had that in a can and I went on and it, he was waiting for an album to, album to put it on because that particular album was already filled up, I guess, is what he said. And, um, and it was going to be the next one and the next one. or So whatever happened, but it was never released. You know, God knows where that sat right Who now. Who has that master now? Uh, no idea. I have no idea. Well, would you like to hear that? Uh, oh, I'd love to hear it. I, I, really I know I would. <laughs> yeah, I would love to hear it because uh, God knows what the heck I played on there. I, maybe I don't want to hear it, I guess. <laughs> right, right, right. That's, and then we, Marion also we recorded at... Um, Universal Studios, I recorded the uh, Gene Dobre album with Lush, you know, and we recorded with the whole band, uh, you know, seven, eight guys in the studio, round robin, we sat and kicked it off. And we didn't even hear those songs until we got to the studio that night. And we finished the whole album that night, that day. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that night, right. But how about yourself, Kevin? You recorded in Minnesota or, uh, until you got to uh, Connecticut, right? Um, yeah, I recorded in Minnesota. I, I did uh, I did an album with Dobosensky Brothers and the Cavaliers at Tommy oh, Mirzinski's studio, yeah. which uh -huh. was downstairs in his house, which was Elliot really cool. Burke. And so that was like my you know brush with Tommy. Of course, I knew Tommy a little bit because he was a band leader, he was older than me. But but uh, but to record in his house was pretty cool. That's the first polka album that I recorded. Elliot Thor. And then right? of course I recorded with Dick Pillar, um, and. Uh, Eddie Skinger. I also recorded, I don't know if you know this, Len, uh, but a uh, shameless plug for uh, uh, myself here on the Eddie Skinger, Eddie Skinger's first album as a leader. I recorded with Roger Lakwala on drums and That's Richie nice. Bernie was on accordion. That was a real cool session. That, that was a album. really, really nice, nice album. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, but my, my, my two favorite uh, studio stories, actually one of all Eddie, as I said, I'll, I'll do the first one. The one that involves you reminded me of that when you said we didn't even hear the songs until we recorded them. 
So the first album I did, <laughs> the, you know where I'm going with this. The first album I recorded with you was the uh, um, uh, Push It to the Limit album. Push It to the Limit. So I had recorded already several, you know, several recordings with, with a lot of different bands. But we always, you know, really work things out, practiced and worked them out and then rehearsed them again. And two weeks later, rehearsed them again and did, passed tapes around and and so we knew him by the time we went to the studio and and uh and with eddie that was not the case and with you i found out also uh acorn doesn't fall far from the tree as they say you know so uh and you learn from the best no question but uh my first recording with you uh, as i said push it to the limit so i so you scheduled in and and i i came to the studio and peppermint studios here i am right and pull into the parking lot and i thought and i just okay cool it down here just a little bit and then i was there a little bit early and i thought to myself why am i here what the heck are we gonna play and most of those songs we just worked them out and roll tape maybe two cuts maybe two takes maybe on the first take we got it but uh, i mean i would think people would be really surprised if they knew really that that's uh, that yeah right exactly like like those things that are played over and over and over and over and over again you hear them on on poker radio you hear them on jobs from here to there the same material that we recorded we play but the first time we heard it was oftentimes on the playback oh, yeah that's how it goes and then you realize oh i want to change the riff on that a little bit or or you'd come over to me and say you know what i think we should do on the second time we should do a variation and uh, and those th those memories are are priceless, Len. You know, you yeah, feel the same way. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and one other uh, favorite uh, studio story for me, and a really memorable one, was my second session with Eddie. My first one was the 25th anniversary album. Uh, the second session, uh, so I was trying to. I was thinking who was on the session. It was like a lot of the guys in that in that 76, 77 Versatone band. Things hadn't changed all that much. So Darlac was still there. Uh, JT was still there. Uh, Richie was not. I played with him later, obviously, with you. But um, so it was a big deal for me, for sure. Very big deal. And I had already recorded several albums. But the second album with Eddie, and I don't know if he uh, started to trust me or if he was going to challenge me or what his reasoning for doing this. But it's the, I believe it's, I believe it's the first song on the recording. It's Talk Back Trembling Lips. And uh, we were in there cutting the trumpet part. Al had already done his parts. And there was a really cool solo that Al Piatkowski did on this. It was all over the place. Yeah. And and Eddie hit the talk button and he goes, hey, Calhoun, he called me. I, I shouldn't have revealed that, but he called me my nickname. He says, hey, listen to this. He says, um, uh, I want you to play. I, I'm thinking maybe you'll play a harmony with Al on this. <laughs> and so, yeah, so, so which, I listened which, to which it did, and it was, it was did, all the way, over right? the place. What? Which, you did, which you did, by the way. Which you, you pulled it off, right? I did. I yeah, did. I, did. And, and I said, yeah, you know, uh, dupe me off a cassette and I'll come back. And he goes, no, like right now, do it right now. <laughs> and I had to do it right on the fly. And that was, uh, for me, one of the first things that I had done in the studio, especially for Eddie, uh, where I really had to like put my big boy pants on and, 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 you know, <laughs> it was, it was a toughie, but it was one of, it's one oh, yeah. of my favorite things. When I listen to it now, I'm, I'm so proud of that solo. You know, you know, uh, speaking of sessions, I can just interject one more session. I remember that I really got a kick out of. I recorded with Little Wally. It was the um, Happy Birthday USA album. That was when everyone was, you know, 1976. God, you know, God bless the USA. And everyone was doing the Red, White and Beauty LBs, uh, LPs back then, you know, and sure. Little Wally was doing Happy Birthday USA. And um, I heard about the session maybe a couple of days in advance. And Donnie Ptak was supposed to do the session. And Donnie Ptak called me and says, listen, Wally called me to do the session, but uh, you better get there and give me a hand, you know, cut half of it. I'll cut half of it. So that's kind of what we did. Um, we recorded at Paragon Studio, 
which was in Chicago. I never recorded there. Paragon. It was in Chicago. It was uh, like around Old Town on one of the tight streets, like Oak, one of those streets that ran east and west, mm-hmm. where the pizza, all the pizza club pizza places are at, you know. And uh, again, it was a weeknight. It was an evening, and uh, we recorded. And Wally Maduja was there. He played concertina. Eddie Madura played stick, you know. Wow. And band really sounded honky, really sounded good. And then Wally stops. Wally, st- we could take one cake. He says, okay, we're keeping that one. We, we did a bunch of songs. He says, we're keeping that one. He says, no, I want to do this one. And he comes into the studio singing with Polish words, um, Until the Last Teardrop Falls by Freddie Fender. And he, <laughs> he's, got all, he's got all the words in Polish, mind you, right? He never released it, by the way. Um, it's out there somewhere in the cloud, right? But yeah. So so we're in the studio. We're looking at who's going to play what on this, and it didn't sound right. So the, you know, someone who played guitar, and I wound up playing bass on it. You know, and, and it's just so darn funny, man. Eddie Eddie Madura played a solo on alto sax. I remember. I was, I was thinking to myself, I got to hear this when it comes out. I just have to hear this. You know, but you know those things just kind of went away when you did those extra tunes. And had it been released, I bet you that it would have been pretty popular within the focus segment. Oh, hey, you know what? Uh, one other thing that they're going to announce uh, at this convention, this virtual convention, is the winner of the Young Songwriter Contest, which is new this year. So I'm really interested. I'm going to be interested in hearing what they've come up with. I'll be interested to hear who is involved in it who has uh entered songs yeah yeah and uh, and you've i've always had an interest in writing as i as i uh, said early on on the guitar i used to write and i was writing before i was um before i was performing on stage actually and len you've you've always had an interest in writing i assume you've written a ton of songs yeah what is what, what what is your favorite out of i don't know it's kind of a Silly question, maybe to, to to call one out, but maybe one or two that have special meaning to you. Special meaning, without a doubt, are the songs that I wrote for my daughter, for Gina, and for my wife, for Estelle. Um, I mean, you you stand next to me on a stage, Kevin. How often do you hear us get requests for "With This Ring"? I mean, probably every gig, right? You hear that? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You know? um, same thing with the songs I did for Gina. Whenever, whenever, whenever someone is celebrating a birthday, uh, like a 16th or a milestone, a happy birthday, sweet 16, the thing we did for Gina. Uh, she turned 21 when Gina turned 21. Sure. Gina's polka when she was when she was uh, uh, just a little one, you know. A funny thing about that song, Gina's polka, that song actually was recorded originally by Casey Shaversky, um, and it was a vocal by Don Lucky, and they called it Tina's, Tina's polka. And I got the idea oh. from my brother. My brother. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was recording that old Bel Air album at the time, back in 1982, maybe. My brother says, uh, you know, there's a song by Casey Shaversky, Tina Spoka. You ought to cut that and, you know, make it Gina Spoka. And I, so I said, well, I can use another song, something nice. And I'd love to do something for Gina, you know. And, uh, and how often we get requests for that song. It's another one. We do that in the medley. But uh, so many of those songs that, that we get requests for all the time. And those are the ones that strike a chord to me. For for Estelle, I wrote uh, With This Ring or Irresistible You, songs like that. You right. know? Estelina, we play Western uh, Pennsylvania, Cranberry Township and areas thereabouts. Uh, we play for, um, we used to play for um, uh, Brother Ambrose. Remember Brother Ambrose? Yeah, I sure do. Play for him at Good Samaritan, those beautiful hard-working people at Good Samaritan, what a nice bunch they were, and still are, of course, haven't seen many of them in a while, but um, they would always ask in that area, they would always ask for Estelina, Estelina Polka. Yeah, you know what, and tying a couple of subjects back together, uh, when we were in the studio, that was on the Push It to the Limit album, when we were in the studio, you said, hey, anybody got any ideas for a riff on that? And that was kind of a community, uh, community, uh, um, Meeting of the mind there for the riff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I tell you, you know, it's um, you just, you know, when you're, I, I guess, you know, in my mind, you know, I when I record, I guess I like to do things that way because you kind of, you kind of, you kind of force out the creativity from right. everyone on certain tunes. You know, when you write it out and you're, and I, and I shouldn't say too prepared because you can never be too prepared. 
but I'm I'm just you know I'm from the DNA of uh, flying a little bit by the seat of my pants, you know, and uh, and that kind of works best for me. I like to be put on a spot with tunes and when right. I play them, you know, and 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 that's just my deal, you know, and it doesn't work for everybody. And then I know it's nice to be prepared, and it shows sometimes, you know, and it shows the flaws show also at times, but. Um, Something well, it's good to be able to. It's good to be able to work both ways. I think it is. It to be is. able to read, to be able to be organized, and have things worked out, and know what you're going to do. But also, if a better idea comes up, or a better alternative, a better variation on something, to roll with it. Roll with it, and and, and Kevin, you, you know yourself. We have an album in the can. We recorded together uh, last year. I was going in to do uh, all the vocals this past March when this whole COVID thing hit. I was going into peppermint and. Um, you know, all you guys recorded, we recorded as a band together right. in the studio, and uh, there it sits, and I've been piecemealing the vocals, doing them at, at my home studio here, and um, it's coming along, but, you know, uh, I'm just taking my time with it, because I, Lord knows when that's going to be out, or when we're going to want to have it out, uh, right. with everything going on, so it'll be out soon enough, right? But yeah, I was getting, wondering whether to bring that up or not. Well, yeah, um, awesome. I'm, I'm excited to hear it. Well, you know, we we tossed a lot of um, ideas around at the session, the session too, if you remember. Uh, right. You know, oh yeah. Change keys on some of those songs. Some of those songs were in sharps, and uh, John brought out his C sharp concertina. We recorded sure. some of those in the E flat. You know, right. E flat uh, vocals change things around and, and just on the fly. You know, and I think that's a cool thing to do. You know, yeah. Kevin, we're just talking about John. Uh, you know, yeah. John's been with the band with me for 30 years. Now, we mentioned you, for instance, started with me around 1997. You've been with me close to 25 years, right? Yeah, close to a bit. Yeah, right. Pretty close to it, right? John's been with me 30 years and uh, the band's together 40 years. Um, I, you know, I look at the anniversary of the Chicago Push and I say 40 years, uh, 38 musicians, four drivers. Wow. Our buddy Mac, he's been with us for 13 years yep. now. Jerry Vontroba, he was with me for five or six years back in the 80s. Gary, yeah, right. Gary, Gary Zielinski and um, David Brzezinski's buddy Tim Reisky. They were with us for a couple of years. Um, my God, you know, hard to, time flies, man. One one thing uh, I do have to ask before, you know, these, these uh, video meetings are kind of fun. We've done several of them, but I got to ask you, it, it feels really good to get dressed up because I haven't had anywhere to get dressed up to oh, yeah. be on a gig or whatever, but got pants on. <laughs> <laughs> I, had I, I had to ask. <laughs> I had well, to ask. I do want to let you know that this is the first time I comb my hair for anyone in over three or four weeks. So, you know. Oh, there you go. Oh, I'm I feeling think. special now. <laughs> the beard, the beard. Um, I trimmed it this afternoon. My wife told me I had to because she knew I was going to be uh, coming on WebEx. And uh, so I trimmed it. So it was, I took about an inch and a half off. It was pretty gnarly. My hair, wow. I, 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 had a, I had my second haircut uh, yesterday um, since February. And, and when, when, when the girl was cutting my hair, she said, what is back? It's looking pretty tough here. She said, what do you want to do with this? I said, well, is it hitting the collar yet? She said, it's like, Three, three or four inches over the collar, she said. <laughs> so, so, anyway, we took it down, and I'm trying to clean up a little bit. So, I'll get. I don't, there. I don't hear that when, when, when I go. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> over hey, the collar is uh, uh, way down the road for me. I want to, I want to throw in a quick uh, thank you to Chris Bogdan, who uh, is taking a bull by the horns with this uh, WebEx and you know engaging with the IPA. Uh, really, quite a movement. Really, a nice job. Uh, thank you to Chris, and thank yeah, you for sure. Um, that whole IPA director, the whole board. I mean, what they're doing. You know, they're doing a great job. I'm really proud to be a member of the IPA. I'm truly, truly proud to be a member of the Hall of Fame, and um, <clears throat> I want to see the IPA keep on cooking. And it's because of the folks that are involved right now, engaged right now, new ideas, new stuff happening. You know, that's what's going to make it hum for many, many more years to come. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, Len, for sure. It's uh, really quite an honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and and uh, I support the organization. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing this and how they use it on the convention. And I'm 
interested in attending the convention virtually. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you, know, you said that you were inducted in 2014, Kevin. Right? 2014. Yeah. I, 2014, that's six years. It's been six years ago since that parade of trumpets came out into the hall. Oh, so, my remember, gosh. Remember that, right? I, I will never forget it. I could never forget that. That was a that was a tremendous showing, and uh, just young players, older players. Um, Jimmy Weber, Mike Ivan, they were they, all the guys. They were all there. I, Everyone, and, yeah. Uh, I, I I shouldn't even start naming names because I can't name everybody there. Yeah. But yeah, that was just a that was a, a fantastic thing. Um, uh, to be involved in something like that. Really, well, to the people that are the young people that are getting involved in polka music, if, if there's anything uh, that I can say to them, it's um, you know, when you're involved in the polka field and there's no camaraderie like the camaraderie you'll find between musicians in polka music. You and nothing against country rock, jazz, and so on other genres. Right. When when you get into polka music, man, you're just never gonna have a problem if you've got a friend nearby. Because they'll bail you out, and what a camaraderie! Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's my takeaway from from my entire career is the people that I've gotten a chance to know, people I've got a chance to play with, and record with, and travel with, play gigs with. Even if it's only one or two gigs, you 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 really get to know them, and um, you get through some pretty tough tremendous. friendships. Equipment that breaks down, or something yep. on a fly, you need somebody to help you with yep. something, you know. For sure. Really unbelievable, and um, and you know nothing like a polka fan. I always say there's no fan like a polka fan, and there's no camaraderie like the camaraderie the camaraderie that you find between polka musicians, and uh, that really is true. Yeah. For all the young yeah. guys and gals, I agree. Please get involved. It's a great, great music that um, is going to move forward, and it's going to move to some high places. And you know the days that were will never be again, but the days that are to come are days that we will never predict that we can never predict you have to make it sure. happen and these young ones that are right. coming out nowadays they're going to make it happen i have no right. no doubt because they see the opportunities you know and they they know how to set themselves up for it and uh with technology nowadays and with the way things are moving you know it's going to happen i i think the day for poker for sure. has yet to come right right now before we get started i asked you to have a toast ready have a shot ready do you have a shot ready well, it just so happens like that. I do. Oh, yeah. on. That's right. You were drinking there in the... Uh, yeah, I saw you earlier. Hey, raise it, raise I it. Just, I just wanted to say that I can't wait until we play together on the stage once again, until I see you once again, and um, renew that friendship. Likewise, Kevin. I'm glad that you and I stand on the same side of the stage and we drink the same thing because we share the wealth, as they say. We do sometimes. <laughs> And uh, and also, I thank you for being so loyal and such a great guy in the band, Kevin, as well as all the guys in Chicago Push. I thank, thank the IPA. You. Thank you, Chris Bogdan. And we say here's to the IPAs. 52 years, is it? Here's to the IPA. Yeah, man. Yeah. The IPA. Nazarovia. Nazarovia. Nazarovia.